I am not rating it as highly as you, my friend. But still oh, fairly what's that? high. Oh, I think I think we lost Anna. <laughs> no, no, no. You're gonna hear what I have to say. Uh, Lights, camera, and f- action. Welcome to the I Remember Liking That Movie Podcast. Remember those childhood movies you loved? We're going to watch them again and find out if they're still as amazing as you remember. Let's get ready to join Anna and Jimmy as they go back and watch those movies you remember being oh so awesomely good. Horror movies that scared. Comedy movies that dared. And action movies so preposterously ludicrous that they defied the laws of common sense. Now, here's your hosts, Anna Santos and Jimmy Coates. I haven't seen this movie in probably literally a few years after it came out. Yeah. 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 I think I, this yeah, is... I think I bought it on a, in a used blockbuster bin thing. And I watched it probably one or two times over the last few years after it came out. And that was about it. Okay. So it's July, 1990. The 80s are over and the movies are just beginning to evolve. Uh, so f- Step by Step by New Kids on the Block has finally climbed to number one on the Billboard charts. Wow. Uh, some other songs on the radio during July 1990. Unskinny Bop by Poison. You Can't Touch This by MC Hammer. Vogue by Madonna. Thank God we were still a month away from Ice Ice Baby being released. All right, stop. Uh, it was summertime. So TV was showing repeats of Designing Woman, 21 Jump Street, Roseanne, Coach, Doogie Howser, MD. Uh, earlier in the month, East and West Germany just unified their economies. The Luzon, I think, I hope I'm saying this right, Luzon earthquake registered 7.7 in the Philippines and killed over 2,400 people. And West Germany, not Germany, West Germany defeated Argentina one to nothing to win the 1990 FIFA Cup. And in five days from when this movie came out, Roseanne Barr will sing the national anthem at a Major League Baseball game to rave reviews. I remember that. (laughs) Uh, The other stuff I don't really remember, I do remember that. I remember yeah. the, everyone losing their mind over that. Oh, God. Which I, and she sang it exactly the way you would think Roseanne Barr would sing it. I don't know why everyone got all fucking bent out of shape over that one. Yeah. I was like, what, did you think she was actually going to try and like yeah. do it well, well and show respect? Beautiful voice would just leave her, her, her mouth and like yeah. angels were singing. No, it, it sounded like Roseanne singing that anthem. Yep. And she grabbed herself and spit and oh yeah, and everyone was like, I, I, I don't get. Yeah, she did exactly what you would think Roseanne would do. Um, the eighties are over, and the movies are just they're evolving. And if you were a kid in the eighties, you saw it. You saw that weird and wonderful eighties turning into this. It's hard to explain. The eighties were all over the place, and the nineties began to. They weren't grittier. There was a lot more family orientation. There were a lot more PG-13 movies coming out. Uh, There weren't a ton of R movies. It wasn't very experimental, the 90s. No, no. They found a formula. And when, like, if one movie came out and it did well, every other studio and producer was like, okay, great. Now let's make our version of that. I think there was a lot of that kind of happening in the 90s. And it was like a a polished not darkness per se a but gloss kinda, like like a glossy 
it was dark, but it was there was a nightlight. Yeah. <laughs> 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 There was an ambient light um, yeah. in the darkness. So, like, it, things were dark, but it never got that dark. No. And yeah. it was more important to the amount of people you got in the seats. And not mm -hmm. to say that the movie, the art suffered, because the 90s made a lot of kick-ass movies, a lot of amazing movies. But, like I said, there were a lot more uh, movies being edited to get more people at a in different age brackets into the seats to watch that movie. Yeah. It was definitely a more commercial time for film. <laughs> yeah. Now this movie, Arachnophobia in 1990, July 20th opens in theaters. Now, despite two other juggernauts films, Die Hard 2 had just opened up two weeks prior to it and ghost. We, I remember ghost. <laughs> I remember Die Hard too. I remember going to the drive-in to watch that uh, with my uh, my dad, I think. But Ghost opened just a week, so even though Arachnophobia was the new movie that week, it still opened in third place with eight million. It closes with fifty-three million, which isn't bad for nineteen ninety, but it had a twenty-two million dollar budget, but still profitable, and it hit video rentals where it's noted in its Wikipedia page that it, it made another thirty million dollars in rentals. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was a financial success. What do you remember about the movie? I remember spending most of it cringing because there is nothing I hate more than creepy crawlies, especially when the creepy crawlies are ginormous. Uh, I was going to say spiders. Uh, no, 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 any no. Creepy, well, that's for me, any creepy crawlies. So if there's a centipede in it, if there's a bee, any kind of bug, I'm like, ew. Like, spiders extra creep me out because you know lots of legs and i feel like they're staring at you so i remember being very creeped out through this entire and cringing through it and just being like oh god yeah because people can argue all they want this was a creature feature yeah, um 100%. Like it just so it happens these creatures were very small um mm -hmm. although some of them i, I kind of remember there were you're bigger than average spider i feel like there were bigger ones right Yes. I yeah. No, like I think small. there were, and then there were some tons of ones. small ones, but there were some big ones. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that being part of it. And what made it so creepy was spiders are everywhere. Yes. There's, right now, there's probably one staring at me or you, whatever. I and am in spiders, the basement. No, then there's probably definitely spiders. There's definitely one staring at me. <laughs> spiders don't overly bother me, but I've been watching like a movie late at night in the dark and a fairly large spider like a would go running across my chest mm -hmm. and I'll scream like a girl because it freaks me <laughs> freaks me out and I know people are like why have to be screaming like a girl because because this happened to me recently and the high pitched squeal of terror that came fucking out of my mouth couldn't even be mistaken for what would <laughs> be only described as a damsel a terrified damsel in distress <laughs> My wife asked me, what the fuck is wrong? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> it's one of the okay, kids. Well, I do not uh, shriek like a damsel in distress. Um, I don't do it all the time. Uh-huh, sure. But I have a vent just above my bed. And sometimes I will see a spider literally, like, dropping down on a, a like, string of oh, wire yeah. thing. Doing their little and Mission Impossible thing? To, and yes. And I'm like, and then I'm like, can I move fast enough? Can I move fast enough? Because sometimes you try to catch it and kill it. And, and sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't. And then it disappears into the room. And then you're like, where did you go? Where did you go? Oh, God, you're in here somewhere. You're not going to like <laughs> crawl into my nose in the middle of the night, are you? These are the things I think. This is, oh, spiders are terrible. My one daughter, I told them, I said, you are a a million times the size of a spider. Just take your hand and squish it. She's like, no, I don't want to do that. I'm sorry. I need a tissue. So I'm like, oh, okay. So let's go get a piece of toilet paper. Let's come back. Where's the spider? <laughs> She's like, well, where'd it go? I'm like, I have no fucking clue. It's somewhere. But in it's the in house. here somewhere. That's, that's good parenting. Yeah. So now she, now you, when you hear the, 
That's my that's my one kid just kicking the shit out of something with eight legs. I I am the one that kills all the bugs. No matter when I was living with my roommate, <laughs> she used to call me from everywhere in the house and be like, Hannah, come kill it. Come kill it. So I'd have to walk over. I'd grab a piece of paper towel because I'm like, ew, I don't want to squish. I don't want like bug juice on my hand. So I would go kill whatever bug it is. All the bugs. And then when we were moving out, she looked at me and she's like, who's going to kill my bugs now? <laughs> I'm like, oh, sweetie, I don't know. I'm moving out to the West End. You're staying out here on the East End. You're going to have to figure that out yourself. And she's like, mm. yeah, buy a hazmat suit and some garden gloves. Now she just got a boyfriend. He killed all the bugs for her. Hopefully he doesn't scream like a girl. Uh, the three biggest things I remember liking about this movie was the spiders. Mm -hmm. And I do remember Jeff Daniels, who has always been awesome. And John Goodman, who's always been totally underrated in like every movie he's ever done. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember a lot, but I do remember those two actors in it. I remember John Goodman a lot in this movie for some reason. Yeah, he's the exterminator. Yeah. I think that he was really, I know, like in my head, I know that Jeff Daniels was in it, but I, he's not who I associate with this movie. Like John Goodman's the only one I associate with this movie in my head. Yeah, I really he's the standout. He, I, I do remember John Goodman standing out. Well, yeah, he's so big and his presence is so bolsterous. No, yeah. Usually no matter what he, movie he's in, but yeah. Um, and he usually plays either a redneck or uh, like when you think of 80s, 90s, you think, what was he in? What was He's that one where the color? You definitely. Yeah. Like he plays like a cop. Yeah. Or um, uh, King Ralph. Big Lebowski. King Ralph. Big Lebowski. He played the loud mouth guy yeah. with the machine guns. That one where Nicolas Cage steals the baby. Raising Arizona. Raising Arizona. God, I remember. I remember liking that movie too. Yeah, I, I remember that liking one. it too. <laughs> we should do that one. I haven't seen that one in fifteen years. But all movies where John Goodman's not the star, he but he's always memorable. Like yes. he's just very underrated. He's so good. And I could be wrong, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure the spiders are not CGI. So. That was one of the things I remember thinking after the movie was like, how the, they must have acted with spiders. There may have been some spiders, but it might not have been CGI as how we know it now. No, I, and I know CGI like from Tron back in the day. Yeah. With Disney, it, they may might have, have used. it may have been more animation. Yeah. I'd be curious to see. Like, I know the bigger spiders were most likely puppets. Um, mm -hmm. But I, rem I remember the little spiders being quite realistic looking, like crawling everywhere. Nowadays, you can get away with that with CGI. 1990 yeah. you means you so, probably filmed it in 1989. I don't know if you could have. So. The majority of the spiders used in the production were real. Did you um, look it up? Yeah. Right now, yeah. Uh, including up to 200 relatively small Delina spiders used in some <laughs> scenes. But the lead spider, nicknamed Big Bob, by the cast and crew was genuinely fearsome and appallingly large. Amazonian bird-eating tarantula. Uh, as soon as you said that, I think they say that in the movie. They're, that's the type of tarantula it is. That's wonderfully horrifying. Yeah. So most of the stuff we're seeing in the movie is is real, real. spiders. Ugh. God, could you? You have to let those guys go. Could you imagine like set. the extras and stuff when they're going like this and the props be going, dude, stop, stop <laughs> fucking killing the spider. <laughs> you know how hard it is to get a bird eating tarantula. We've only got one more <laughs> box of spiders in the back. Okay, guys, like you can't be just killing them all willy nilly like that. <laughs> and that, yeah, and the oh, one God. thing you don't want to hear in that props department is like. Uh oh, <laughs> and then they're like, "We mean, uh oh." Uh, we left the back, the box yeah. of spiders open. <laughs> the spider box is empty. <laughs> that would be so. I couldn't. I couldn't have done this movie to save my life. Yeah, that would be a too many bugs. Too many. 
Okay. That's actually cool that you looked that up because now that kind of makes it even more. Because I was wondering that, like, maybe they just did mirror something with mirrors, or but if they've really mm. used. Apparently, yeah. the majority of them were real spiders. Oh. All right, so let's go to the tale of the tape. The tagline for this movie was eight legs, two fangs, and an attitude. I like that. That's I like pretty, that. That's pretty, yeah. And the outline per Rotten Tomatoes is after a nature photographer, Mark L. Taylor, dies on assignment in Venezuela, a poisonous spider hitches a ride in his coffin to his hometown of rural California, where arachnophobe Dr. Ross Jennings, Jeff Daniels, has just moved in with his wife, Molly, Harley Jane Kozak, and young son. As town residents start turning up dead, Jennings begins to suspect spiders and must face his fears as he and no-nonsense exterminator Delbert Mc, McClintock, John Goodman, fight to stop a deadly infestation. The reviews, Rotten Tomatoes from 44 critics at the time give it 93%, which is sounds awesome. Rotten Tomatoes, 100,000 plus audience reviews, 54. Oof. IMDb holds the movie at 6.5 with over 70,000. This is definitely a, a critic darling and an audience. But I'm hoping most people thought it's when it's PG-13. Yeah. Uh, maybe people were thinking, I don't know. I do remember liking this movie. So let's watch the trailer. I remember liking it too. But uh, like you, I, I, I probably a I few don't remember years much. after it. I remember feeling like it was a kid's movie, though. Like, for some yeah, reason in my I head, definitely, it was like... And it kind of was. Like, it was a PG-13. That's And that's yeah. kind of what I think the 90s, because it was Hollywood greed for money, but it also allowed, the 90s allowed parents to go to the movies with their kids more. Yeah. So I did actually get to go to the theater and watch this. And I believe it would have been with my parents. All right. Now, let's share... Oh, crap. Can you see the whole thing? Yes. All right. Oh, it's not even widescreen. God, this is the Amblin Entertainment is uh, Steven Spielberg. Yes. The Jennings family has just moved oh, to the small town of Canaima. Oh, Ross, smell that air. Oh, God. In search of a simpler life. Want to blow up a bull frog? Okay. It's the perfect place. Goodbye crime, goodbye grime. Except for one pesty little problem. Come with me and look at the web. The web? I have a terrible fear of spiders. Come on, we live in the country now. It's time to work through this irrational, paralyzing terror. It's not irrational. <laughs> Hollywood Pictures and Amblin Entertainment present Jeff Daniels. Honey, we're in the living room. We need you to kill a spider. And John Goodman. Don't even talk. Infestation. That guy's just a spider. Would anybody object if I tore this floor out? I would. False alarm, then leave on. There's no spider here. Every so often in a little town somewhere, there is a health scare. There's a rumor going around that some kind of spider might have killed Sam Metcalf. Doubtful. Spiders make convenient culprits. There's no spider here. I think one of your Venezuelan spiders hitched a ride here. There may be some spiders around here that are very dangerous. Yeah, chill out. Just run. Oh. They spread out from a central nest in a web-like pattern and dominate the entire area. Oh. When that happens, this town is dead. Better uncork my private stock. Oh. Hollywood Pictures and Amblin Entertainment present Arachnophobia, eight legs, two fangs, and an attitude. Perk up, Lloyd. If we find the spider that did this, you can arrest him. Arachnophobia, a thrillomedy. A thrillomedy. I did read that where they didn't know whether or not to market it as a comedy or a thriller. So they... Yeah. yeah. And Kathleen Kennedy's name was right there on, uh, as a producer. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that definitely looks like a family movie. Yes. A family thriller comedy. Which Steven explains Spielberg, why. Kathleen Kennedy. I was like, it was a kid's movie, right? But it felt... Yeah. But I'm like, it's not like a kid's... Like, it's not a cast of kids. No. But it feels like a kid's movie. 
I think. Let me see if I'm remembering this correctly. And I think they could get away with it being because it wasn't it wasn't a slasher. It wasn't a ghost. Yeah. It was it was nature. It was a spider. Mm -hmm. What are your predictions? I think I'm going to like it but probably not as much as I remember liking it. I I'm like going to I think I'm going to like it and I can definitely watch it with my kids, I think. Mm -hmm. Um I think I'm going to like it still. I think I'm going to like it, but I think I'm just it's going to be like I don't like it as much cuz I remember really liking it when I yeah. was younger. I have a feeling there's not as many spiders in it that I have in my mind yeah. as they're being. I think it's a little more conservative than what I'm thinking of. I remember a lot of spiders. And they didn't show a lot, but maybe they didn't yeah. want to give it all away. Maybe. <clears throat> Those coming out of the, uh, the sink out of the there. Sink. Yeah. See, that, that you would have heard me scream. <laughs> like a Definitely. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, no, Some I think guy I... kicks down the door. <laughs> I heard a damsel in distress. Is there a no, woman just, in here in vain? Um, just me, buddy. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think I'm still gonna like it. I think I'm not gonna like it as much, mind you. I would have seen this when I was like, I think for the first time, probably twelve. Yeah, so it was probably that much better yeah. because of your age. And I think I saw it again when I was like nineteen or twenty, and I think that was the last time I saw it. That's around the same yeah uh, I, i'm following the same and i can't remember how i felt about it the second time i watched it but i like i felt really good about it the first time i watched it i really liked it so yeah. but it never made my rewatch rotation so i'm like hmm. and i'm wondering if it's because it wasn't as good as you thought the second time or if it was like it like like it when it was released it was released with die hard 2 which is amazing yeah ghost which oh my god i like, hate ghost no really i hate ghost with such a fiery passion really it's patrick one of my swayze most... and demi moore or demi? i love <laughs> i love patrick swayze i love whoopi goldberg G gave me one of my favorite lines to quote ever which i use all the time you in danger girl i use that all the time I hate Demi Moore in it. <laughs> I hate the story. I hate this love is forever bullshit. I hate it. I, I don't really remember the movie. <sighs> I, I I only saw it maybe once. Every time it's on TV, I have to change the channel because I'm like, God, this movie's stupid. And I can't I can't say that now it's gonna be out in the world. And unfortunately, I'm afraid of what the backlash will be. But um as a woman, I'm supposed to love this movie. Yeah, I thought um, every woman loved this movie. Yeah, I, that's the theory. It, this is my deep, dark secret. I hate Ghost with a fiery passion. It's one of my most hated movies ever. <laughs> I hate it so much. Yeah, it's definitely not my favorite Patrick Swayze movie. <laughs> no, Roadhouse. 100%. Mm. Oh, my God. What? Roadhouse for the cheesiness factor now? Actually, no. Okay. When it came out, I did like it because we thought it was so cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. Back then like Patrick Swayze doing karate and Tai Chi <laughs> was like the ultimate. Everybody wanted to be him. <laughs> so no, I think my, my favorite Patrick Swayze movie would be point blank. Mm. Wait. With Keanu Reeves and Gary Busey. That's probably my favorite Patrick Swayze movie. Isn't that point break? Yes, Point Break, Point Blank is uh, one of my other favorite um, John Cusack movies. Yes, Gross Point I Blank. I love Point Blank. Gross Point Gross Blank, Point I Blank. love. Yes, I got the two mixed up. Point but Break, I love. Point Break is my favorite Patrick Swayze movie. Oh, yeah. No, Roadhouse is my favorite Patrick Swayze movie. With um, Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar coming in a close second. I remember watching Patrick that Swayze? when it came out, and I was like, even for back then, I thought, actually, that was a good movie. Mm -hmm. the Tu Wong Fu movie yeah and Patrick was a beautiful woman let me tell you that was <laughs> yeah he's a little better than Wesley Snipes oh poor Wesley somebody I feel 
I feel like someone did him dirty in that movie. Like was he like, was funny in the movie, but he was not an attractive hilarious. woman in that movie. They they should have done more for him. Um, and it hurts my heart a little bit. But that movie was like it it hits the heart, man. It hits the heart, and I'm like oh, Patrick. But still, Roadhouse, 100. percent I will watch it every time it's on TV. I own it on DVD. It is my favorite <laughs> Patrick Swayze movie. Also, oh, I've become well. disenchanted with Dirty Dancing in the last like 10, 15 years because I've just actually realized. my mom, uh, my mom, my wife <laughs> said the same thing. Uh, she yeah. said she doesn't like it as much as she used to. I used to be obsessed with it, and then yeah, I'm I like, don't how, I don't know how you liked it then. It's a horrible movie. <laughs> It was, you know, star-crossed lovers, yeah. you know, like fighting the tide to be together and through dance. Like it had all of the markers for something. You, But then when you really started thinking about it, you're like, I don't know. I feel like this is a little predatory. <laughs> <laughs> it's making me, it's making me a little uncomfortable. I'm just saying. See what PC and the woke world did. It just ruined everything. Just everything. Pretty much. <laughs> but that was also because it was that movie came out before the internet and after the internet came out that's when we all realized that baby is supposed to be 17 and uh johnny castle is supposed to be 26 and you're like that's a lot of years <laughs> yeah especially even back for, then people should have known that or did they even say that in the movie they don't say it in the movie they don't say it's only when you read the script and it gives his age when he's first introduced mm. then you're sitting there going like in the in the movie it's clear he's older than her. Of yes. course. She's just graduated from high school. She's going to go to Mount Holyoke. I think that's the university she's going to go to. Like private, because she wants to be, I don't know, social worker, work for the Peace Corps, whatever the fuck she's going to do. But anyways, but she's a very sheltered 17-year-old. So I'm just like, at that point, it becomes like a little uncomfortable where I'm like... And then there's this weird savior relationship between her and him. And yeah, we're, yeah, it's, I'm just like, this is, it, it aches me a little bit. Dancing is still on point though. And we should yeah. all do the pachanga. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we're going to go watch Arachnophobia. <laughs> yes, we and, are. Uh, see if it's still good. God, I hope so. Yeah, me too. You heard them. Movie time. Let's all go to the lobby and get ourselves a treat and then watch a classic kick-ass movie from whenever the one we're about to watch was made. Uh, right. Let me make sure everything's going. Do, 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 do. Yep. Okay. So that would be welcome back. All right. So initial thoughts, not score. Go ahead. I this one. But it definitely still felt very much like a kid's movie. Like it had kid's movie vibes, but I liked it. Right. I love this movie. I thought it was funny, creepy, it had a sense of adventure, a sense of scope. I enjoyed it thoroughly. And in the words of a movie legend, this movie had perfect nipple placement. Oh. Oh my God. Like my overall thoughts are like why I liked it then were obviously spiders were creepy i'm trying this is a long time ago like yeah. this is back in 1990 and i'm pretty sure i i saw it in 1990 or 1991 spiders were creepy that many of them were even creepier it, it, i knew it had some laughs i i did remember john goodman and i did remember a very intense finale that's why i liked it then so we'll go through the synopsis here i just had it Okay, so in a Venezuelan entomologist, James Atherton captures two members of an aggressive newly discovered species of spider of prehistoric origin. The spiders lack sex organs 
indicating that they are laborers or soldiers, thereby existing as a hive, atypical of spiders. Just the beginning of this movie with the helicopter, mm-hmm. the, the giant waterfalls, it was very Steven Spielberg. It was very that, I, I, I know he didn't direct it, but it had that, it had a really big scope to it. The cinematography, the music behind it, I thought was awesome. It gave it a, like an adventure feel to it. Yeah, it gave you definitely a very um, grandiose kind of thing. Like it, it was what you threw. Yeah. It was um, wow, yeah, beautiful. It, it, yeah. Cliffs. A fertile male of the same species bites bedridden American nature photographer Jerry Manley, who has a, has a severe seizure from the venom and dies. The scientist sends Manley's body back to his hometown of, uh, what was it, Kanama? Kanama? Kanina. Kanina? I think it is Kanina. California, unaware that the spider has crawled into the coffin. And the other cool thing was that this was not uh, a, a two-minute opening. This was no. a good a good 10, 15 minutes of their adventure and them shooting the fog into the trees and looking at the species of different butterflies and spiders. So it kind of said, like, it, it's, you can tell it's taken its time to set up the story. And that spider was, that was huge. There are a couple shots where it kind of looked a little fake, but nothing overly, overly bad. No, I was actually pretty impressed with that, where I was like, I'm not, you know, you're not looking at it and being like, mm. yeah, yeah, it wasn't on a string yeah. and someone was pulling it. Yeah. Um, Manly desiccated body arrives at the mortuary of mortician Irv Kendall, the actor. Uh, you, you definitely are going to, re- if you're, if you grew up in the eighties and nineties, you definitely gonna remember this, this actor. Yeah. Uh, and you're actually you're going to remember a lot of the actors in this movie. The Venezuelan spider gets out and mates with a house spider in the Jennings barn. The domestics. Um, yeah. I just want to point out really quickly when he opens up the the box that the body came in. I thought we weren't going to see the body. And then all of a sudden there was like a quick pan down to the body. And I'm yeah. Like, and he oh. looks, yeah. Like that was jolting without even trying to be jolting. Yeah. Like, like that they spider were going for. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Oh. Like so that boy, it, it fed on that dude, like the entire trip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They made sure you saw that. Cause when they were it. actually, when that when that when they first had the they were in Venezuela and they had that coffin they put him in and they had that big hole where the spider I like yeah oh that's kind of really convenient but then I they put the pole through it so they could lift it I'm like oh okay that that make <laughs> it was a functional hole yeah like, it, it, was, it was there on like, purpose yeah it, was it wasn't purpose, just so yeah. the spider could get in it actually yeah, had the, a purpose the entire opening for this they give you every piece of information that you need for the story to make sense later. Yes, but they yeah. Never have to do a recap pair no. of dialogue. No, no. And yeah, it's smart and they do it in a way that you don't, it's very easy to see. It's easy to follow without being too obvious. Yeah. The domestic spider produces hundreds of infertile drone offsprings with their father's lethal bite and they leave the nest after consuming her. Now, I, I've always liked Jeff Daniels. They did a good job of having the, the, the family come to town, getting set up. He was afraid of spiders. They, they did that in a way that wasn't obvious. Mm-hmm. They're in the, the country and uh, they saw a regular spider. Him not getting the practice that he was promised when he got there. A lot of the actors that you already seen, like the, the doctor, the doctor's wife, um, mm-hmm. the, the mortician, the mortician's wife later on was, what's her name from the Drew Carey show? Yeah. I was like, oh my God, that's, and I couldn't remember her name when I was watching it either, but I was like, I can't remember her name now. I know her. Yeah. Even the, the football coach, even it was a lot of faces in this movie. Yeah. And they really took the time to give them at, at least some depth. Like at least they weren't just cardboard cutout characters. Or no. spider cannon fodder. Um, that was actually the really great thing about the getting to know you party that they threw for Dr. Yeah. Jennings. Yeah. I was like, you get to see a snapshot of the entire town. Yeah. And you get yeah. to understand who the players are through conversation. And I was like, this is amazing. Thank you so much. 
I appreciate it. Mrs. Ross is Jennings' first patient, Margaret, dies after being bit by one of the new spiders. And he doubts Metcalf, the original, the actual, the first doctor there, his diagnosis of a heart attack. Okay. And the sheriff, I read that he's recognizable. And he plays, like, every character plays their their part perfectly. Mm -hmm. And yes, it is very family-esque and it is very old school monster movie or whatever. But no, they, it's so far, like the acting was spot on. Um, another arc that kills high school football player, Todd Miller, just after Ross conducted a routine team checkup, which was funny. Uh, <laughs> hurting him the nickname of Dr. Death. Even the little kid that comes over to play with his, the doctor's two kids yeah. was, was funny. and Funny? Yeah. Yeah. You, who I wants to that. go and blow up a toad, a bullfrog or whatever it is? The next victim is Metcalf, the doctor himself, who is bitten by his foot after the treadmill and dies in front of his wife. So, yeah, there's a lot of death going on. Like the spiders mm -hmm. are. But you don't see a ton. You only see that one. And, and they do it. And it's I liked it because they did a lot with the, these little spiders, like the mm -hmm. tension of it crawling in Buddy's slipper and then Buddy putting the slipper on or just about to get one of the kids sitting there and then they get up just in time and drop the book on it. And I think it, it resonated well because there's spiders everywhere. Like there's one right behind you now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I refuse to look. Thank you. <laughs> that would have been totally awesome if there was actually a spider. <laughs> I'm like, no, we're not going to, we're not even going to entertain this because no, spiders don't exist. Actually, I'm not afraid of spiders, but the creepy crawly of spiders. Like everybody knows what it feels like when a spider yeah. crawls across your foot, your arm, whatever. So every time in the movie you see that spider moving towards someone, that is the moment where you're just like, oh, God, oh, God, because yeah. you know what's coming. The shower scene with the, the teenage girl. Yeah. She put her hand through the web. The web? I was like, oh, because I know what that feels like. And it's gross. And then the spider's crawling on her. And I was like, oh, God. I they can't. had the spider drop on her head and go yes. down the side of her face, like, on her chest and keep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and that's yeah. what made it so creepy. Yeah. Because was like, it was totally plausible. Totally yes. plausible. It's probably happened and you didn't even realize it. 100%. 100%. And at so, this point, there was not a ton of spiders. There was. It was usually mm -hmm. one per scene. Um, yeah. And they were big, but they weren't ridiculous. They weren't tarantulas. They were, yeah. I've, I don't know if I've seen a spider quite that big in my home, but I've seen, I live by the water. I've seen decent sized spiders in my house. Mm -hmm. uh, so it wasn't out of the realm of impossibility. Yeah. So when the original doctor dies, uh, Ross becomes the town doctor. And knowing that Metcalf was bitten by a spider and an iota of an unknown toxin was detected in his body, he suspects that the town may be infested with deadly arachnids. Ross calls Atherton and asks him to help his investigation. That's the uh, scientist from the beginning of the movie. Julian Sands, I forgot, was in this. I like him, too, uh -huh. the, the professor. Uh, even the professor's assistant. Um, yes. Yes. Who his name is Chris Collins in the, the movie. I remember him from a bunch of stuff. So he sends Chris Collins, the assistant, uh, Ross in the county corner, Milt Briggs, order that Hollins and Miller be exhumed, the original victims, and they perform autopsies. Now, during this time, the doctor's renovating his basement and the wood's rotten. The wife calls, because they think it's termites, calls John Goodman's character. Who is awesome. John yes. Goodman just plays the best character. It's funny, though, because um, at one point he spits for a second time. And I was like, oh, my God, that's his let's get her done spit. Like when he's like buckling down and he's like, we're going to terminate. And he just like he spits and it's a violent spit. And I was like, I love it. I've been I want, for months. I wonder like if Dale. Slice. I wonder if the uh, Mike Judge based Dale Gribble on this character because probably John Goodman character had a I know I get probably not da, da, da. but actually he was kind of right every time there was quite he was actually 
right on. But yeah, his character was, it was good. He was funny. So they perform autopsies and Chris confirms Ross's suspicion after he identifies bite marks on all of the victims. Ross and Chris catch one of the spiders in Metcalf's house the following day. That was actually pretty good too. That was actually an intense mm-hmm. scene when they were the sheriff, the lead, the head coroner. Yeah. Um, the assistant and the doctor, and they were trying to catch that spider. That was, mm-hmm. that was a pretty intense scene too. So for a kid's movie, it was, it was scarier than fucking H2. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Tell you that. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Um, when Chris mentions the new species discovered by Atherton, Ross realized that the town's killer spiders and Atherton's discovery are related. Atherton joins Ross, Chris, Milt, Sheriff Lloyd Parsons, and exterminate Delbert in Kanema, and they discover the spiders have a short lifespan due to their crossbreeding. Atherton tells them that the spiders are soldiers sent to eliminate potential threats for the male spider leading the colony, which he calls the general. He learns that the general produced a queen and inbred with her to produce a second nest guarded by the queen, which could produce fertile offspring. And they just do this through conversations with the the professor and the professor does Mm -hmm. it very nonchalantly and it it felt like a a natural conversation that they would have about this topic even when they were saying when he was with the football coach and he's like how do you like it out here but you being from the big city no car noises and all that nothing but crickets tons of crickets and then he's like actually i i haven't heard any crickets and then the coach is like actually i haven't heard of any crickets in a while either just a, these nonchalant things building up and helping the story. I think it was really well done. Ross and Chris and Delbert discover the one nest is in Ross's barn. When he destroys the nest, Delbert finds Atherton dead. Attempting, he was attempting to catch the general. He touches a strand of its web and is bitten by the male spider, which then escapes. Chris gets Jennings' family out of, yeah, and out of the infested house. Um, mm-hmm. That was a great a great scene uh for using real spiders i only noticed one mirror shot Mm. where they would they used a mirror you could kind of tell just a little bit but other than that the ones coming through the door handle yeah under the door uh, with their little webs coming down from the ceiling like they were everywhere (laughs) yes and i feel very nauseated now just thinking about it Thank you. Thank you. I was and like, that's was, too many spiders. That's too many. Because when they and, were coming also out of the sink, and I was like, oh. oh yeah, when they all came out oh, of the God, sink. like straight out of my nightmares. Yeah. Straight out of my nightmares. I was like, no. This makes me feel so icky. So icky. And yeah, there was a lot of them. And they were, for using real spiders, like, that was pretty impressive. I, um, yeah. Honestly, um, there were times when I was like, I wonder how they got that shot. Like, there were certain things where I'm like, like when the spider went between the floorboards, I was like, I wonder how they got that shot. Like, did they just let loose a spider and just keep recording it? Like, like they must have had something that kind of slowly pushed them towards it to make them do they or do they just Uh, like, or was was there like a unit on set where their entire job just screaming at the spiders to take direction? Yeah, was the little actually closer to probably? Like, just getting a lot of B-roll of spiders doing their thing and being like, when can we use it? Yeah, that? yeah, it could have been just spent an entire unit just shooting spiders and going places. I, want to I would love to watch a making of this. Oh, God, yeah. Like, One of it's did, on YouTube. How did they make the spiders do what they needed them? Or did they dictate the story or, like, what this, the spiders' action by what they already were doing naturally? And they were like, okay, let's cut it together and make it work. Or yeah. was it, okay, we're hoping for this. How can we make it happen? I'm like, I don't know. I'm almost willing to buy like a Blu-ray or DVD if it has um, a making on it. So I'm just curious. I would love to see. This is 1990. Yeah. We're not CGI at all. 1990, um, real spiders. It didn't go crazy over budget. So I'm like, what? how did you do it? No, I'm curious too. 
Ross, Chris, and Del- Delbert actually tells them because they say that they all like the um, Jennings, Ross, Jen, the doctor is convinced, the professor is convinced that the nest is in the barn. And it's Delbert mm-hmm. that actually says, nah, he, they'd be too drafty for them. They, they would, they like moy, like musky, yeah. damp places. Ross, Chris, and Delbert discover that the one that's in Ross's barn, when he destroys it, that, oh, I found him dead. And Ross fall when they're trying to get out of the house, everyone gets out, but Ross, the doctor, and he falls through the floor into his wine cellar, the spider's second nest guarded by both the queen and the general. And the little spiders wouldn't come down and he, he starts, I like it when he starts putting it together, like it's yeah. dark, it's musky. The other spiders are not coming down here to get me. Also, can we highlight how gross the nest was? Oh, like and they did say it would be disgusting. pulsating. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The, the nests in this movie are super, super gross. And I just like to put that out there. And that was one of the grossest things that I've ever seen. Yeah, like, thank you. I agree. And that that there's a lot to be said for practical effects. Yeah. That was that was gross. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. It made looked skin gross. Crow made me want to vomit. Didn't look literally fake? the first nest that we see. And it's doing that pulsing thing. I was like, oh, God, oh, I don't. Oh, God. No, I, I would have like saw changed. that in my basement, like in my laundry room. Again, high pitched squeal. A knight in shining armor would kick down the door and say, <laughs> I, "I hear a woman in distress," and I'll be, "No, it's just me." <laughs> I just light my house on fire and be like, "I don't want it anymore." Oh, because they actually had spiders come out of it, and they were the new breed. They were the new breed, so they were huge. They looked like tarantulas. And they didn't look fake. They didn't look yeah. like, they look like actual tarantulas or tarantulesque. Yeah, it was gross. So he has a fight with the queen and electrocutes the queen. But then the general. And for a fight with a grown man and a giant tarantula-like spider, it was pretty cool. Like, that was a great... Because here's... The greatest thing about this movie is they established early on that these spiders are sneaky motherfuckers. Yes. The professor, he's, yeah. From the beginning, they're yeah. like, they are like, they attack, they track movements. They, so it's like you see all of this like leading up to this fight. So that when yeah. grown ass man and the general are about to go at it, you're like, yeah, totally possible. This is an actual fight. It's going to be hard. And he fight Jeff Daniels fights like a man who's terrified of spiders. Kind of like what you saw me when I thought there were with my cat chasing yes. the mouse here. Yes, just like that, actually. It was very, I thought uh, it was having flashbacks to the movie. It was like, is he going to grab his, his bottle of Chateau Margot? You throw my um, noopy mug at it. Yeah, like, yeah when he was yeah. like $127. I was not like, the Chateau. Well, not the Chardonnay. Man. But the fight at the end was good. Trapped by falling debris as the general prepares to bite him. Ross stays perfectly still until the general is in position and then flings a spider that was actually quite with the thing on him and catapults mm-hmm. the thing off of him. They really thought this through. Yes. Like every little part of that, like that's the director, the writer, the producer, like they really thought it through. They didn't, I, this looks like it was planned beforehand. Things were changed to make sense or some didn't work. And it looks like they really made sure that it, everything made sense. Despite being badly burnt, the general leaps out from the fire. Just as the egg sack hatches, those spiders were coming out of that egg uh-huh. sack. Uh, Rot shoots it with the nail gun, sending the flaming spider into the egg sack and destroying the nest. Delbert rescues Ross with the general and the queen and the nest destroyed and the soldiers dying. The spider threat is over. Deciding that they missed their old life, the Jennings family returns to San Francisco. And that was the movie. Yeah, like I said, it had some laughs. It wasn't like an all-out comedy, but it did have yep. some funny points. It was creepy. It was gross at points. And it was very, uh, the finale was intense. My summary for people remember liking the movie. If you remember liking this movie, you were correct. This was a thriller adventure that had comedy in it. It had big scope and it all works even today. The landlines and watching TV at certain times with the Wheel of Fortune it does show its age, but it is totally forgivable. 
And if you haven't seen it, uh, but would like to see a creature feature done right, or you want to watch a, a lighter, but creepy likeish movie at Halloween, or even just on movie night, especially with kids, not too young, because they no. don't freak out seeing a real spider, but I'd say 10. Yeah. 10 and up. Uh, Preteen. Yeah. Yeah. I'll... This movie is definitely it. Uh huh. So, yeah, your summaries on the movie? Honestly, if if you remember liking it, you will still like it. Yeah. Because the simple fact is it's it's a well-made movie. Yeah. Like, this is just really well done. And it hits all the right points. And that's a, there's a reason why, like, even when, because I barely remembered the movie because it's been, what, like 30 years? God bless. Yeah, um, it's been a while for me, too. Yeah, because this was not part of my rewatch. No, um, no, not at all. But I remember thinking, no, I remember really liking that movie. So now when I rewatched it, I was like, well, that makes sense. Because it was just, it was a very, very good movie. Like, uh, the the movie itself was well done. Yeah. Acting was good. Writing was good. Like, the the effects, the spiders were good. The spider wrangling was good. Like, it was yeah. it's a really good movie that is creepy and achy and gives just enough discomfort i wouldn't even say it gives a really a scare but it makes you super uncomfortable yeah i agree with yeah. that yeah. and i'm like that's the perfect kind of scary movie to watch with someone who's younger like yeah you said like 10 and up kind of thing or a very right. mature eight-year-old if you can find them like it's a good here's your introduction to scary movies so yeah if you remember liking it feel free to watch it again because you will still like it because it's just a really good movie. Okay, so could this movie be made or remade in Joy Today? Yes, but why? This movie is fun even today, and to try to find replacements for those actors in the original would be tough. But saying that, if you get the right actors and directors, I could see today's special effects bringing the scope of the spiders to a whole okay. other level, if done right. Not bigger. You don't want a bigger spiders, but the amount you could have crawling around. Yeah. You wouldn't want to go overboard. I would do, I would prefer to see like a sequel with Jeff Daniels being contacted as mistaken expert and bring him back. He's trying to say he's not an expert, but they, because he dealt with it, mm -hmm. bring back John Goodman. That, I would rather see that like a, le a, a legacy sequel or mm -hmm. something like that. What about you? Think it could be made or redate, uh, remade I today? Think, I agree with you. I don't think it needs to be remade. Like it's not one of those that's begging for a remake. However, it could totally be remade today. Yeah, with some small tweaks because obviously we're not living in the land of landmines and you know appointment. Tele but I mean, people still appointment watch like Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. That yeah. still happens. Even young people apparently this is a thing now but i mean you could definitely with some small tweaks to the story just a few scenes inserted you could totally update it so that the 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 obstacles they have to overcome are up to date yeah but i mean it was small tweaks the the entire movie could stay exactly the way it is just a couple scenes here and there to be like and instead of landlines you know, the cell tower gets taken down by a spider. Yeah. Like yeah, or a like, bunch of them get in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they chew through the wires or whatever. Right. That kind of stuff where it's just like a literal, a little like 30 second scene, but it moves the story along. But yeah, no, I don't see any reason why they need to remake it, period. No, no. It's, it's perfect. It's perfect the way it is. Yeah. So my movie score for this movie, I would give it a nine. To say this movie was nostalgic in all the right ways is an understatement. This movie was beautifully shot. Even in the country setting, it was beautifully shot. The acting was great. The script was great. And most importantly, it was fun. It didn't drag. It took time to set up the story as well as the characters. Even the cannon fodder for the spiders, those characters were set up and used properly. It was subtle in its clues. It was excellently paced. And again, I can't stress it enough. It was just fun. 
especially mm-hmm. especially if you're watching it with kids. Yeah, it's a good one. I am not rating it as highly as you, my friend, but still oh, fairly high. Oh, I think I think we lost Anna. No, no, no. <laughs> You're gonna hear what I have to say. That, that's all right. Her rating. No, no, no. I'm I'm giving it a seven point eight. Seven point eight. Seven point eight. Because yes, it is very good. You want to watch it, and you should watch it again. It is almost awesome. Give it like. Don't get me wrong. I really enjoyed myself. I would totally watch it again. I don't think it's going to be put on my rewatch list. However, now that I have rented it for the next 30 days, I will probably watch it another couple of times before the rental's death. Because it was a fun, well-made movie. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, let's let's watch it. If it shows up on a streaming service for free, it'll probably go into my rewatch rotation. I'm just not at the place where I'm like, that was so good. I need to keep it closed so I can rewatch it whenever I want. But it is. It's just a really, really well-made movie. Well-acted. Well-staged. And it's funny. And it's uncomfortable. And it's creepy. And it has just the right amount of all of that so that you can watch this movie and not have nightmares. Yeah. And also not get mad at how shitty it was. And you just wasted a little over an hour and a half watching it. You walk away and you're like, that was good. That was really, really good. And you have no problem saying to someone, yeah, you should the question again. Do you even remember? Yeah. Like, this is great. But yeah, I'm not quite uh, amazing, but like borderline awesome. I have a theory that I think because of the time that it came out in the 1990, I was heavily into Evil Dead, Friday 13th, Halloween, mm-hmm. Nightmare on Elm Street. And I I do remember liking this movie, but because it was that horror comedy thriller-ish movie, yeah. it took a back seat in my memory because it wasn't as gory and yeah. horrific as those other movies. I, I think that's kind of why I lost touch with the movie. I'll definitely watch again. I will not probably not watch it tomorrow, but that's I'm great. glad I, I went back and, 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 and watched it. Yeah. I liked it. Honestly, so am I. I'm glad I got to see it again because, like, you know when you remember liking something and you're like, no, I remember liking it. But I couldn't remember any, like, I remembered kind of like I remember John Goodman in there. And I remembered, weirdly enough, the houses, like big Victorian houses in the middle of like empty fields. And it was like, like, I remembered that. But for the most part, most of the movie was just like, I think I remember laughing a little bit. I don't remember being super scared, but I remember liking it. And then you watch it again and you're like, I get it. I get yeah. It. it was just super kind of scary mm-hmm. about a lot of the films that were made at this time, like in the late 80s, going into the 90s. Just the beginning of the 90s. I think once we hit like mid to late 90s, we lost it. But this was the time when everything was a film. You weren't yes. making a movie. Or independent. Going, you, if you're yeah. making a film, yeah. it's You're looking for the great cinematography. You want, it doesn't matter what the subject of the movie, of the film is. You're like, I am making a film, not a movie. This is not disposable. This is not mass produced. We are bringing art to this. And I think yeah. that was still happening at this time. Yeah. So you can yeah, this was near the end. That was, build, that was well done. And then it starts to peter out in the 90s. And that's when they start math producing for the market. And they're just, they're making movies with profit. Well, this director, he directed a couple of these, but these were the movie he worked on as a producer. And this is like Raiders of the Lost Ark, Poltergeist, Twilight Zone, uh-huh. Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom, Gremlins, Goonies, Back to the Future, Young Sherlock Holmes, Money Pit, Inner Space, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Arachnophobia fits into that that yeah. that batch and you could tell like the way it was shot the mu- everything like the time and was oh, really gosh. spent with it yeah i am so glad i watched this movie again honestly it was nice to see it again and it was just like oh this is now i'm not gonna because i think before all i remembered from it is the spider so if i saw it on tv like in the in the cat i was like no man i don't want to no spiders 
But now I might actually watch it because I'm like, okay, I've, I've moved past the spiders, kind of. Um, and now I know at which point I should cover my eyes. Pulsing. Yes. Eggs. Things. <laughs> so gross. Yeah, just, there are a couple. Uh, yeah. And like you said, not scary, uncomfortable. There were, they I definitely have yeah. a couple of ick, icky factors. It's just it's a lot of ick. It's a lot of like cringing and just like, oh, curling yourself into a ball because you're like, nothing should touch me right now. This is not a yeah. thing. All right. Good times. Good times. Awesome. Yeah, man. Congratulations. You just had one of your childhood movie memories vindicated. Or they just eviscerated it. I don't know. This is a generic one-size-fits-all type of ending to the podcast. So thank you for listening, and please join Anna and Jimmy next time for another episode of the I Remember Liking That Movie podcast. If you dare to go back and watch that movie you remember liking, 